<laughs> there is a need for a socialist approach because uh, so our struggle is connected with other people's struggle with the working class here no, I don't think it's a very complex conflict. All sorts of Palestinian organizations, Israeli organizations, left organizations. Provide answers to how to deal with repression and on a, how to actually liberate Palestine. Uh, we got 1,500 people. So the Palestinian movement in Berlin is actually in a in really good condition right now because we faced so many uh, repressions by the state. Last year, 15,000 demonstrated. Because if I enter forcefully into your house, you may want to kick me, and then I would say that I'm fighting for your attempt to kick me, and that's self-defense. So, so many years have passed without decolonization, and the longer you wait with decolonization... A direct and serious relationship in a solidarity program based on... No, no, actual struggle. Hey, it's us again, Hannes and Janis. And we are at the Marxismus Congress, this time in English. As we already mentioned, we are a group of liberal and neutral people who believe that you always have to listen to both sides. Well, at this conference there are no both sides really, it's, it's more like well, there seems to be many sides within people who are in solidarity with the Palestinians. True, Yanis. They did not seem very sure on how to actually address the topic. Anyways, uh, it is a complex conflict, but we are about to find out how the positions of such people look like. Just a second. You know, people like Hannes and Janis are the problem. In the German discourse, Germans try to distance themselves by making the occupation more complex than it actually is. There's no chance for neutrality if one power is occupying the other forcefully, for decades now. As Razan Kanafani, the great Palestinian author, once said, Talk to the Israeli leaders. That's kind of conversation between the sword and the neck, you mean. But don't listen to my meta-narrator voice. As in real life, and in this episode, listen to the people who've worked in the field for many years. And especially, listen to Palestinian voices who experience suppression at first hand. Hey, my name is Mohammed Khatib. I am a Palestinian. Uh, from north of Palestine, from a small village called Safat, but I was grow up in a Palestinian refugee camp called Al Helwi camp in South Lebanon. And what I do, I am the European coordinator for Samidun a network, solidarity network with the Palestinian political prisoners. Okay. And in your opinion, uh, why is there no coherent left position on Palestine, especially in Germany? Why is that? What do you think? I mean, there's many big reasons for that. Of course, histo historical reasons and, uh, you know, what yeah. I mean, and emotional uh, reasons, but also I think uh, because very important part of the left in Europe, not only in Germany, it's a Zionist uh, left, and if not Zionist, it's a racist left sometimes. But also this doesn't mean that there is no uh, leftist movements and organizations that in solidarity with Palestine and even we have examples of uh, revolutionary European comrades and internationalist comrades who passed away and they give their blood for Palestine. They have been in prisons even in Germany in 70s and 80s. We know their names, we know their history. Uh, many of them, they lived in Palestine and in Lebanon and they were in the 
okay, refugee camps, struggling with the people and giving services. So attacking the Zionist and racist uh, so-called left in Europe, this doesn't mean there is no revolutionary left, which is, exists and should be stronger, and this is where we work together with, uh, with them. Okay. Why are Palestinians in need for uh, international support? Because the struggle of the Palestinian also is not only for the liberation of the land. Our struggle is against the movement, a Zionist movement with a Zionist racist ideology. And this is a Western movement as well that was, you know, raised in, in Europe. We are fighting a European colonial uh, movement inside back home in our homeland. And we know that this colonial movement is not only attacking Palestinians, but they are only also attacking other uh, peoples around the world. And, you know, Uh, so our struggle is connected with other people who struggle, with the working class here, with the working class in the United States, with the black struggle, uh, with the Latino people seeking liberation, with the Filipino people fighting against mining companies and you know, agricultural hegemonic companies. So our struggle is connected. This is very simple for us. So it's not, we, we are not calling only for a, you know, a solidarity with us, but we are calling to build an actual relationship with these forces of national liberation movements on, to have a practical solidarity. You know, not, uh, we are not expecting a statement from an organization, rather we are expecting to have a direct and serious relationship in a solidarity program based on, you know, actual struggle. Okay, my name is uh, Ilan Pape. I'm the director of the European uh, Center for Palestine Studies at the University of Exeter in the UK. I'm a social activist for many years, born in Israel and active all over the place. Okay, thank you. Um, would you agree that the Israel-Palestine conflict is the most complex conflict in the world right now? No, I don't think it's a very complex conflict. I think it's actually quite a simple case of a European settler colonial movement colonizing someone else's land. What is complex is the solution. Because so many years have passed without decolonization and the longer you wait with decolonization the project of decolonization is complex but I think the uh, the issue itself is very simple uh, but unfortunately Israel was building this shield of complexity to protect it from any international review okay thank you very much so but I, I quite don't get it why do you call it settler colonialism is this not a little bit harsh for a nation that wants to defend itself or no no it's uh, settlers colonialist movement settled in someone else's homeland and then they have to defend themselves because if I enter forcefully into your house you may want to kick me and then I will say that I'm fighting for your attempt to kick me and that's self-defense Israel is not self-defending itself Israel is using force to sustain uh, its uh, colonization that began in the late 19th century and the indigenous native people of Palestine do not agree uh, to that colonization. So it's not harsh, it's a very accurate, uh, in fact academic, not just political, it's a very accurate academic uh, definition of the Zionist movement and the state of Israel. My name is Phil Butland. I'm, I'm a number of things actually. I'm the speaker of the Linker Internationals group that tries to bring together non-German activists in Berlin. I also helped organize the Palestine block at Marxist Muss and I'm speaking at a couple of meetings tomorrow about Palestine. Very cool, um, or interesting, but um, so how does this work here with uh, Marxismus? How did you bring that together? Because normally the Palestinian question in Germany is kind of problematic. It uh. is indeed. I, I, I have been inside Marx 21. We have had... Okay, the general position has been solidarity with Palestine. That's not, that's not been a problem, but there has been an ongoing discussion about, okay, how important it is this given the difficulties in, in Germany and for example what position do you take to BDS do you um, again everyone is against criminalization of BDS but there are different positions on the street and we realize as a result of these discussions but also as a result of what's happening in the outside world with the increased numbers of bans going on with the Bundestag BDS resolution and things this is becoming an increasingly important subject and because I've been a Palestine activist for decades, and myself, uh, uh, myself and a couple of other people, um, they basically said to us, go away, organize five, five meetings, and we'll, and, and we'll take them to the uh, Marxist-Muslim meeting. 
and so we then discussed amongst ourselves because as a result of our activism as a result of the discussions we were in what are the subjects that we want people to, dis- to discuss at the conference so since you just said you are an, a Palestinian activist mm-hmm. or activist for Palestinian rights mm-hmm. what would you say are the, the, the problems in Germany right now why does it need your activism for okay. example there is a specific problem in Germany about how Palestine is perceived and I think often people identify the wrong problem people say the big problem is the anti-Deutsche I actually think the anti-Deutsche aren't very relevant for, 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 most, for most of the time what the problem is the silence of the uh, silence of the of the left the, which is that people and I have this discussion time and time again with people people who support the Palestinians in principle um, who a lot of know, know about the conflict quite quite a lot but say as Germans this is not something we can talk about and what this silence means is that although there's quite a sophisticated under, understanding and although um, a majority of Germans support the Palestinians it's shown in polls and polls the often the only voices you heard here are the loud voices of the anti-deutsche and then a few of uh, Palestinians and to a lesser extent of, of of non-Germans here. But don't you see the actual responsibility that Germany has and so many people are afraid that uh, it is uh, difficult to speak because uh, there is the claim that uh, Israel has the right to defend itself and uh, You know, because of what happened in Germany? Yeah, okay. But there's two different questions here. Let me, let me take them different. Um, I, I find it quite funny. We, we, there's something that gets raised, raised again and again, which says, you can talk about Israel, but we can't. Because Germany has a special responsibility towards the Jews. Firstly, Israel isn't the Jews. For that, even after the Holocaust, most Jews wanted to go to Britain and the USA, but because of racist immigration laws, weren't, weren't, allowed, weren't allowed in. But secondly, the inference there is that, well, it's one of two things. It's either that Germans care more about and about anti-Semitism than non-Germans, and I feel a bit insulted. Really. I mean, I have been fighting fascism all my life, and the idea that I'm allowed to talk of it because fascism for non-Germans is okay is something quite insulting. Or there's an, there's an alternative way of looking at that, which is to say there is some sort of German gene, which means that as soon as Germans start talking about uh, Jews or Israel, then they'll start invading Poland. And I think this is also a racist, racist argument. I think in as much as there's a problem in discussion in, in Germany, it's because there is not enough discussion going on, and there's not enough discussion because of this abstract worry what will happen if we discuss well to be honest if you start discussing you get to know more about the subject and that's surely a good thing maybe to conclude what's mm. your um for the future how are you optimistic or um what's your um take on like how is it the political views in germany how could they develop in the next month maybe Uh, do you already observe a shift, maybe? Yes, I mean, I actually am uh, very optimistic. Um, and it sounds silly, it sounds silly with all the bans that are going on, with the fact that we can't even demonstrate, we can't even hold a Palestine, Palestine flag uh, on, on, on Hermannplatz without being arrested. Um, there has been a shift. I was, actually I was the main organiser of the demonstration against the Gaza bombing in 2014. And we worked with all sorts of Palestinian organizations, Israeli organizations, left organizations. We, it was the largest demonstration for Palestine in Germany for decades. We were really proud of ourselves. We got 1,500 people. Last year, 15,000 demonstrated uh, on, 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 on Nachba Day. The main difference wasn't anything that I did or the people who organized us. It's that we've got the new movements like Palestina Spricks of young Palestinians who are one prepared to be radical. I, the, the, you see a generation shift actually. The, the old generation had ties with Hamas or Fatah or maybe the PFLP, the old Palestinian parties which meant a certain degree of conservatism. The new, the people in Palestine are generally from the next generation of people, the Intifada generation of people who are going to go further. So that's the one thing. Another thing you notice is actually the number of non-Germans. It has 
going on the demonstration last year uh, on Nachbar Tag, go and listen to the different number of languages being spoken, you know, Arabic of course, Hebrew of course, but English, Spanish, Russian. Actually the one uh, language that was missing was German, a, a, a lot. But um, we're in a spread, particularly in Berlin, the number of non-Germans is growing, it's grown from 1 in 10 to 1 in 4 in the last decade, and the, lang- the length of time in which non-Germans are staying in Berlin is growing, which means that actually people like me are becoming more part of German politics. A third thing, as I want to go, go on to one, is I think Black Lives Matter has made a huge difference, and I think something which hadn't happened so much in the past, but is happening now, is that Germans of colour are seeing that the oppression of Palestinians, the racism against Palestinians, um, is exactly the same thing that they are uh, experiencing. And again, on last year's demonstration, the number of non-white faces was hugely more than, say, uh, 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 and, and here I don't just mean Arab. I mean, the, 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 2014, we mobilised quite a lot of Arabs, but not a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of, of other, other people of colour. And so there are these three groups which mean that the mobilisation potential of Palestine is, is more. I think also amongst young, young Germans, there is a little bit of development and way too slowly, but in groups like the SDS, the Lincoln Student Organisation and things, we recently had some networking meeting with Palestinian groups, with our Lincoln Internationalist group, the Lincoln Neukölln, and the SDS and Solid and, and, and youth organisations. We've already organised one public meeting together and we're planning more strategic meetings about how the German left and the, um, and the non-German left and the Palestinian left can work together in more things. And so I think the potential now is better, more than it, certainly I mean, I've been in Germany 27 years and the potential is more than it's ever been that I've experienced. We're not realising that potential uh, at the moment. We're just, so some people are starting to talk to other people. Um, there are still way too few uh, German Germans, Bio Deutsche, on the, de- on, 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 the demonstra- on the demonstrations. But there's a, there's a start of a shift in something. I think one last thing maybe. Um, talking to friends, friends who are not German, they often say, or some of them often say, we can do this without the Germans. If the Germans don't want to support our struggle, then forget them. I think the problem is we live in a racist society. We live in a society where the opinion of someone of colour, the opinion of someone who doesn't have a German passport is easy, much more easy to ignore. And so actually it does make a difference that we get the Germans on these demonstrations as well. I think this is starting, this is happening way too, way too slowly, but I think if we start to write off the Germans, we condemn ourselves to be in a permanent minority situation, which means that we are, we are much weaker than the people who, who, who we're fighting. And I actually want us to be stronger than the people we're fighting. So, Hannes, it seems to me that the question of how to approach this and how to mobilize is an actual problem here. Mm, true. I mean, yeah, apparently I'm kind of understanding now. Understanding more of what the problem is with Palestine, but the path to this goal is still unclear to me. Let's hear what Yusuf has to say after these final reflection talks. Uh, hello, my name is Yusuf. I'm active with the Palestinian movement in Berlin. And I'm here at uh, Congress, Marxist Mus, to um, really, I think, more than anything, find out what uh, needs to be done to organize um, in a Marxist way, to organize um, with a clear vision and uh, to see what's the current status of the Palestinian movement outside of Berlin and other places. So it was interesting, you had a lot of sessions here about Palestine and how to organize and uh, many things which sometimes I found problematic but in the end it seems like that you don't have a clear structure on how to approach in the future. Is that true or are you optimistic for the future? The thing is that Marxismus is, of course, very close to the to the left as a party, and the left as a party um, is still undergoing a, a big process um, and hasn't really settled the the question of Palestine at all. I have to say, 
on a local level there are some structures who have a good position on Palestine and uh, know that it's a set of colonial project and that uh, a clear stance on Palestine and therefore on Israel is needed very much also to be still yeah, genuine in their anti-racist work and anti-imperialist work which they put on their flags. Mm. It's interesting here because I think um, the Linke locally tries in some ways to be still kind of like modern and good looking also by addressing the Palestinian issue but is still afraid of going all the way in and really um, respecting each Palestinian voice that comes here no matter what their demands are. And Sorry, maybe so maybe you were talking about this discussions about what is the right way to, to move forward. Um, but what, what, what we saw was a lot of arguments, like always fighting against each other. And this didn't look really um, productive, actually. That's exactly the point that I just wanted to make. Um, the, there was not actually, it was, it was um, experienced or maybe viewed as um, as a fight between Palestinian, let's say, revolutionaries or Palestinians that are wanting to liberate Palestine, but actually it was more a, a clash between a more liberal, not very honest, not very inclusive, uh, if I may use that word, um, inclusive in the sense that to include all Palestinian voices, process from the side of Die Linke, a more yeah, liberal um, organization, because it is a party in Germany and, and gets state money and uh, wants to have <laughs> um, votes on, on election day and on the other side the Palestinian movement so the Palestinian movement in Berlin is actually in a, in a really good condition right now because we faced so many uh, repressions by the state that everyone really um, yeah, got together and agreed that we need to be united and so actually it was a united Palestinian voice uh, from different angles actually against uh, the yeah not very honest approach maybe of of the linke do you see any um difference in how uh the berlin bubble is handling the palestine question uh, other uh, compared to the yeah let's say other german cities or villages so historically in in germany we have always had the biggest palestinian community in berlin And Berlin being um, on top of that, or maybe because of that, nobody knows, <laughs> I certainly don't know, has that political momentum and the a political um, movement that is always ahead of most other cities because of that, especially on the Palestinian question, because most Palestinians move to Berlin. Mm, and in that sense, of course, uh, not of course, but it is quite understandable that the Palestinian liberation movement in Berlin will be spearheading the German liberation movement and in that sense I do understand the exhaustion of people from other places in Germany but it doesn't mean that whatever they do organizing between them um, even if they can't get the same amount of numbers organizations is very important and I think when the movement in Berlin as it is at right now is really united and has a political line there is a, a, a structure a revolutionary uh, structure that can organize uh, even more it will expand out of Berlin but that it's very important um, to have these steps in order to have an effective movement because um, if you try to move a step uh, move steps too quickly um, you will actually Uh, not be able to to organize organize the masses you need to be patient and go step by step okay maybe to conclude so today was the last um, almost the last day tomorrow is the last day of this congress uh, how would you summarize this these three days now um, yeah what do you think about it and adding to that does the palestinian movement does it have to be marxist Or do you think it could be more general? So I think um, the two conclusions still are one, that the left, the party, at this point is not a valuable ally or it has not a valuable, significant role in the Palestinian movement in Germany. 
that is one. And two, there is a need for a socialist approach because it is the political line that can actually provide answers to how to deal with repression and on a how to actually liberate Palestine uh, in the long run. This would be a whole another episode what a liberate Palestine actually means, but I'm, a, I'm convinced that the socialist answer is the only um, uh, right one because most others would go into a two-state solution, would go into a, a solution that is still headed by the bourgeois in Palestine who is also suppressing the Palestinian people. So these are the two conclusions and what I heard from most of the other groups is actually a affirmation of what is going on in Berlin. So in that sense, even though many others felt a kind of like helplessness, I felt an affirmation of, of the process that we are undergoing. So, even though people were leaving some sessions and had some very controversial arguments, Yosef seemed to be quite positive, actually. Sure. But uh, he sees the solution in, well, socialism. Oh. Which is bloody radical, Hannes, you know? Oh, oh man, yeah. But on the other hand, from all we've heard these three days now, it is a frustrating situation in Palestine, as it seems. I have to say that I can relate with these people, actually. Janis, Janis, you are right. I mean, this demonstration ban in Berlin, this is pure madness. Or German wearing t-shirts of the Israeli Defense Force. Yeah, I know. <sighs> well, long story, short gin, that was it from <laughs> us. Got it, man. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>